Hey guys, CG Crafted here. This is a great time for Ultimate Sky because it just got another update. In case you are new and don't know how to install the Blender add-on, make sure to check out the first chapter of the previous video about the add-on update so you can see how to do it. So what's new in this new update you might wonder? Well, it got so many new things and changes I don't even know where to start. Well, let's start with what you will experience when you download the update. Or if you are a new user, then open the add-on on the right side panel. Well, now it's in the U shaders tab instead of the old Ultimate Sky tab. It's a shorter name, so it won't take up as much space. And now it can sit next to the Ultimate Water shader. How convenient. Okay, so you will probably notice uh, there are some new buttons. Let's add the sky. I'm gonna use cycles for a change. Well, actually I use it all the time, but in the videos I usually use EV. Okay, I added the sky, it is working. Let's start with an important new feature, the delete sky button. Instead of you having to delete the sky shaders manually, then delete the EV props, then restart Blender to actually remove the unlinked stuff, you can just click on this button and magic, it's all gone. You don't have to revert, you don't have to reset, you don't have to... Well, you get the point. So it's a very important new feature. This makes changing between the light and pro skies a lot easier. The other new things you may notice is the yes, not space mode present. We don't touch that. Not yet. It is the new assets tab with the volumetric fog option. Oh, if you got the light version, don't worry if you don't see this uh, light doesn't support assets. Let's add this object. This is good for atmospheric fog, works very well in Cycles and Eevee. It has a small custom shader, let's try it. The shader can be controlled via the material. Here it is. Changing the color changes the strength of the fog effect too. And this can change the size of the fog details. The other new object is the moon object, which has a custom shader on it too. Since the main point for this is to make realistic moon scenes possible, or maybe with a detailed oversized moon in the background, the shader lets you control a fake lighting on it. This is happening in the material step too. So you can manually change the sunlight strength on this or even change the direction of the light. Again, this is meant to be used in the background where it will be horrible if the actual sun starts lighting it up from the bottom, that wouldn't be realistic. But you can grab the moon texture, take it out, and use uh, normal lighting on it if you wish. And now we can talk about the main new features that are in the shader. First of all, there's a small change. The sun and moon size property used to be connected to the shadow sharpness. In fact, the main feature was to change the sharpness of sun and moon in cycles, so resizing the moon and the sun was very limited. Thanks to your guys' feedback, I separated these two features, so now you can have a wider range of sides for the sun and the moon without changing the shadow of sharpness. So you can have big moon or sun in the background, sort of making a zoomed in low field of view effect. And there's a new sun and moon shadow sharpness slider. Uh, these do what the older size controls did. Another requested feature that I added is moon phases. 50 means full moon, just like minus 50. 0 means practically no moon, and the other values in between make the moon look like this with the banana shape. Take caution when using moon phases. With some settings, the fake cycles bloom can be too much. You can always turn it off down here in the shader. For the generated compositing nodes, you need to tweak the clear node when you are using cycles, which is uh, responsible for the bloom effect, as the default settings can make the moon look like a blob despite you using different types of moon shapes. In some simpler scenes, removing the glare node completely is the fastest solution. For EV scenes, you don't have to worry about this, as EV's bloom is superior to Cycle's compositor bloom, and it just works. Next thing is simplifying animations. You needed to drag around keyframes to change the speed of the cloud timeless presets. 
Originally, I set it up so the clouds move very fast, and if you jump around on that timeline, you will get completely different cloud shapes, but not anymore. You will have this nice UI element that lets you change the speed, reverse it, or completely stop the cloud movement. And there is a new seed value that you can change to generate different uh, clouds. Same happened to the high clouds. And here comes the magic, the new night sky tab. This contains the completely reworked star system. I mean, there wasn't a star system before since it didn't have any options, so it was just some stars and that's it. This new system is very intuitive as I created two sliders for different purposes. The change sky exposure slider acts like when you change the exposure on the camera in real life and it starts to gather more and more light to make everything brighter. As you increase this value, more and more stars will be visible. The smaller ones start to appear while the Milky Way will be visible too. It could be also called the light pollution slider, like when you are in a city you don't see many stars, but when you are in a desert or something like that, you can see the Milky Way and space. The stars amount slider is an artistic control that lets you override the sky exposure settings, so if you want more stars than the automatic exposure control provides, you can always increase the amount of stars manually. Or if you don't want... Uh, the Milky Way to appear, which happens when you turn up the exposure slider, then you can use this. Yes, because the procedure of Milky Way is another new feature. This is the first sky add-on to feature a procedure of Milky Way. You can change the color, the nebulous and the light intensity. If you want to create a space light scene, you can override the exposure settings with the star amount slider that will start to flood you with stars. It can look quite crazy on higher values though. The custom sky nebula color can be changed here. The brighter nebulas can be visible in daytime, so be careful with it. I wanted to remove them because of this, but they add a cool sort of cloud-like distortion feel to the daytime scenes, almost like a new layer of eye clouds, so I kept them. And now let's get back to the experimental space mode preset that we skipped at the beginning. This is a preset that is setting up the shader automatically, so this means if you spend time on tweaking the sky you can reach the same results. This actually turns ultimate sky into a space HDRI. This wasn't the planned feature, but the stars and Milky Way turned out so well that I had this idea to turn the shader into a space shader. It is limited in functionality, yet so if you try to move the sun too much it will become a uh, daytime and it breaks the space look. The best thing at the moment is either flip the scene, turn the camera in the way that suits the scene, or remove the move like this, and add in maybe a sun object or a sun lamp that can be manually set up for the scene. That's all for this video. I will see you guys later.